In this tutorial, we'd like to speak a little bit about function blocks and compliance blocks in Guide, how to use them, and how they fit into the overall software development environment for Plus One. Representation of the software hierarchy in the Guide environment, which shows increasing complexity of elements as we climb the ladder. The first step on the ladder is the component level. When you first start programming in Guide, you'll probably be using these lowest level components. These are elements which accomplish simple functions like arithmetic calculations, add, subtract, multiply, constants, logical comparisons like AND or OR, exclusive OR, etc. Switches, if this condition is true, use this value. If not, use this other value. But also slightly more complicated functions like sending CAN messages, various counters, or timing elements like delays or oscillators. These components are the fundamental building blocks of all guide applications. They are all found on the Components tab in your guide environment. All higher level blocks, like function and compliance blocks, are built using these components. A free express license allows you to write programs using these lower level components. The next step on the ladder is compliance blocks. Each compliance block is written for a particular piece of Danfoss hardware, like a joystick, or a sensor, or a pump. You can think of compliance blocks as drivers for the corresponding hardware. Compliance blocks have been written by Danfoss engineers and tested together with the hardware to perform correctly. They are written using the lower level components and like those components, they require only an express license to use. Similar to compliance blocks are function blocks. They're similar in that they perform higher level program functions and they are written and tested by Danfoss engineers. They are different, however, in that they are more general. For instance, the sensor 3 point function block takes a signal from an input device does error checking and generates an output to a linear scale with the requested dead bands. The block isn't a targeted toward a particular piece of hardware. In fact, it could be used with a joystick or a foot pedal, and it could be used with a Danfoss device or from some other manufacturer. There are other function blocks that aren't tied to hardware at all, like a PID block, a soft ramp block, or a J1939 CAN message block. One major difference from a commercial perspective is that the use of function blocks requires a professional or a trial license. If you don't have one of those licenses activated, you will not be able to add a function block to your program. What's more, if someone sends you a program with a function block in it, you will not be able to modify it. In order to use function blocks in a new or existing project, you must have A. have the proper license, either a professional or a trial license, and B, have the function block installed in your guide environment. Remember that the easiest way to get function blocks, as well as compliance blocks, HWDs, and new versions of guide, is to use the Update Center. Let's look just quickly at the next two steps on the ladder before we focus on compliance and function blocks. The next level of sophistication in the Plus One software hierarchy is the application libraries. These are the Propel application library and the Work Function Control library. These libraries handle multiple aspects of higher level functions. They have a collection of different related functionalities like pump torque, anti-stall, or engine overspeeding calculation. Use of these application blocks requires both the professional license as well as an additional license for the application library being used, either PAL or the Work Function Control Library. The top step on the ladder for Danfoss software is for subsystem applications. These are packages that are fully developed and ready to run for some particular application, such as controlling a fan drive on a machine or displaying EIC engine information on a Danfoss display. The programs can be downloaded from our website and are designed to run as is on a particular platform, while being easy to modify to run on a slightly different hardware. An important thing to remember is that subsystem applications are keyed software 
which means that they're only able to run on platforms which contain the Danfoss software key of 1010-6603. Generally, these are controllers and displays with product numbers that end with a 2 or a 9, but check your data sheet to be certain. You will also require a professional license to compile as they contain function blocks. The last rung on the ladder represents total vehicle solutions comprising one or many controllers and displays and the communications amongst them. This would be for you as an OEM manufacturer to complete, although Danfoss or a Danfoss distributor can be contracted to provide consulting assistance. Using the blocks, both function and compliance blocks, is designed to be fast and easy. Start by dragging in the block from either the function tab for function blocks or the hardware tab for compliance blocks. We have a core set of function blocks which fall into four libraries. Inputs, outputs, filters, and controls. There are two CAN communication protocol libraries, J1939 and CAN Open. Lastly, there are some specialty libraries for certain platforms, a safety library for the SC controllers, display libraries for the classic and vector-based screen editors, the latter containing customizable widgets, a utilities library, and others. The easiest way to familiarize yourself with the function block libraries is simply to install them from the Update Center. In order to try to use them in your application, though, remember that you'll need either a professional or a trial license. When using the blocks in your application, the first thing you'll notice is that like for the overall application templates, there's a wealth of information transposed from the block user manual into the block itself. The user manual itself you'll find in the function tab. Particularly important information which you'll find in the block is expected data types and ranges for each signal value. For the function blocks, you'll see that we follow certain conventions. There's always a status and fault output, which follow a common pattern. There's an I.O. bus, which contains all of the input and output signals used and produced by the block. All the most recent blocks have checkpoints predefined for the block, which just need to be activated with the checkpoint signal. Keep in mind, however, that checkpoints consume memory in your program so don't activate them if they're not being used. When you see the blue ribbon in the upper right hand corner of a page in a function block, that tells you that the page can be entered into to find more information or has adjustable signals. If there's no blue ribbon, the page is locked. We said that you need a pro or trial license and the function blocks installed in your guide environment to modify a project that contains that particular function block. If you have the correct license but do not have the function blocks in your guide environment, you'll see the following message. You can either check the warning to see which function block library is missing or just install them, install them all using the Update Center. Remember that the driving idea behind Guide from the beginning was to make it an easy, fast, and open development environment. A major tool towards this end is to provide tested, higher level building blocks to give you a head start on your programs so you don't have to reinvent the wheel unnecessarily when you're coding. This is where function and compliance blocks come in. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at plus one helpdesk at danfoss.com, P-L-U-S
the plus sign, the digit 1, helpdesk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.